So let's have a look at what an awful lot of people seem to think a mountain or a mountain range consists of and we end up with this sort of effect don't we where we have a couple of humps like that both the same size scribbled in like that now of course what we end up with is something that looks rather like the top of a bacterian camel that's the one with the two humps walking behind a white ball or you may form your own opinion of whatever else it might look like okay as painting mountains go I suppose it's a start but I promise you we can have something looking a lot better than that and a lot more realistic and give you a lot more variety if you just follow the DVD but of course we have volcanoes which are about as near to that simple inverted triangular shape of a mountain that you can get and here we have perhaps the most famous and most photographed volcanic mountain in the world which is revered by the Japanese as a holy shrine and that is of course Mount Fuji right now the drawing's done really it's only two letters of the alphabet if you think about it an upturned V and a few Y shapes what could be simpler now we're going to use four colours for this we've got first of all the lightest colour which is raw sienna and we're going to use that mainly in the sky and also permanent rose and light red and then we're going to use thalo blue which is this blue here I'm also going to start off with the number 12 round brush right now the first thing I'm going to do you can see is to get a nice watery mix of raw sienna perhaps lighten that off a bit and you can see I'm going to put this all over the picture it's only a very very pale colour Right, now what I've got here is a little mix, and you can see that sort of pinky orangey colour, which is a mix of light red and permanent rose. So I've given myself effectively three colours to play with in the sky, or in the, the pink parts of the sky. You can see the three different colours. And I'm going to use a combination of each of those for the various streaks as we streak this into the sky. So the first thing we're going to do is to start putting some light strips of these colours. I'm going to go up more into the pink. And you can see the way the paint is running because the paper is still damp. Now I'm going to bring the phthalo blue here but I'm going to bring a little bit of the permanent rose to make a slightly more purple colour and this is going to come in up here so it's not too stripy just a little bit of blotchiness here and there. You can see the way I'm just stabbing the paintbrush on. 90% of the success of water or otherwise of watercolour is down to how thick or thin you have the paints and above all the timing of when you put one layer on top of another layer. Right I'm just going to add a little bit more definition to the bottom of the clouds here which have started to dry off and give me that essential slightly harder edge. Right now I've just taken a few little streaks out of the sky with a damp brush. Now I'm now going to get the hair dryer on it so I'll come back to you as soon as I've got this dry. The next thing we're going to do is to use some of this thalo blue and some more of the just a hint of the permanent rose. You can see the benefit of having the big number 12 round brush here now as we get down to the bottom of the mountain before it dries I'm making the paint a bit more watery that helps to create a sort of mistiness towards the bottom of the mountain and I'm just lifting just a hint of the snow I don't want the snow to be too obvious and prominent because the sun hasn't yet risen and started shining on the snow itself. Right now with some clean water and taking the excess off I'm just going to soften off that bottom edge of the mountain. Right now what I'm doing is making a mix of light red, permanent rose and thalo blue and I'm making this quite a bit stronger. You can see how strong thalo blue is and how much of the other colours it takes to make it move away from being blue. Now I don't want that, that sort of hard edge 
So this time again with a dampened brush I'm just going to touch the top of the landform here. Right now I'm happy with that because it creates a misty hit and miss effect at the base of the mountain which is exactly what I wanted. This is something in another situation where the technique where you think oh everything's gone wrong everything's blended together but here by using the properties of watercolour that help you make mistakes at times this actually helps you to create a nice misty effect because I want to create an effect that sort of reflects the colours of some of the sky and again I'm going to pull this here and there across the land like that so in the foreground we get a nice mix of raw sienna you only want the merest touch of phthalo blue to make it slightly green again I'm no problem about going into the red and letting it mix its own way now I've mixed a very dark brown near black colour by using strong mixes of phthalo blue and light red you can see that I'm just using this very strong colour and you can see it doesn't run at all. Now this time I'm using some of the raw sienna colour and I'm going to add in a little bit of the permanent rose and certainly some of the light red to give a nice orangey sort of colour. That starts giving some added light to these trees as if they're catching the light of the morning, early morning sun. So there we are. We created a nice morning sky with the first rays of the sun breaking over Mount Fuji. And then just by blending these other areas in here, as we come forward, it creates that lovely misty effect which is enhanced by the hard edged effect of the trees. But the main point of the exercise is to prove that painting mountains is not difficult and it's also not difficult to integrate the mountain into a complete landscape like that. Right, so there we are with a temporary mount around the picture, Mount Fuji at dawn.